Hello, my friends. I'm showing you this brat filter because apparently there's this new trend called Brat Girl Summer. I haven't done a deep dive. I'm not gonna be able to explain it the way you might want it explained. I do understand I am not a brat, nor am I a girl anymore, okay? We are full on woman these days. <laughs> But I love this color green and I thought this would be really, really fun. I was going to do rhinestone, some liner, um, you'll see the color green eyeshadow, some neon greens. I just thought it'd be really, really fun. I love it. Um, can't really explain it, but this is our vibe. So this is the color that kind of sparked this for me. That is so pretty. I'm so excited. I feel like I've used this before, but I wanted to use it again. So this is the perfect excuse. I have my little green, my green. We're gonna do a green base. I'm thinking that I might do this more in the socket for depth and then white base to really make that other shade pop. But we're not there yet. It's Feral Monday. Anything goes. Okay, so let's take this City Color Base. This is in the shade Fresh. I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand because I don't know how pigmented I want this to be at first. So we'll just pick that up. C31 here. And you know what? I think I want to smooth it out because this is going to be really pigmented. Really, really pigmented. Where is Sheila? There's Sheila. Gotta get Sheila ready for Feral Monday. And then we'll pick that up and then I'm going to tilt my head back and I'm going to put that pointier side into my socket. Oh yeah. Okay. This is going to be perfect. This is really Feral Monday. I'm using green as a base. Here we go. Put on your makeup seat belt. Now, this is a testament to trusting the process. You, we are going to just need to put on the makeup seatbelt, remain calm, and trust the process. <laughs> this, is, this is fun to me. I never, I never put this on and go, ooh. I, I promise you I can see the end result. Now, the end result still might not be something that you would enjoy, but there will be information here that would still apply to the look that you enjoy doing. Now, one thing you can see is how, when you have a color like this, as uh, in terms of the base, you can see how smooth and flat that is across my skin. And sometimes when we use a shade that's closer to our skin tone, you're like, mm, I don't really see it. But with this, you absolutely can. So this is what your eyeshadow base should look like. That's how flat and smooth it should look. And I will say, this brush was designed with that in mind. And then this just made my entire existence. I just got this. Thank you so much, Colby. You have no idea what that means. When I wanted to um, add to the beauty space. I wanted something that was going to make your makeup routine even more fun, more enjoyable. And I wanted you to feel good about yourself. So that's why I did makeup brushes and not something else. So posts like these. I get a lot, but sometimes I just, I feel overjoyed and I have to share them. So thank you. My day is made. Now I like the idea of my natural skin peeking through up here. But we do need to blend this a hair. So what are we gonna do? Let's wipe off our C31. On Sheila, now Sheila has green. <laughs> and what I think I'll do is I will grab, I don't wanna, like I said, I don't wanna cover it up. So I want a really thin, less coverage concealer. I'm gonna use my Kosas for this. But this is how I'm going to do it. And the reason I'm putting concealer there, that's how much we're using. Do you see how little we're using? But what we're going to do is grab it on the C31. And then I'm just going to take it and kind of melt this together. And we're able to use concealer here because we don't have any friction there. My eye doesn't blink there. So that's why I don't really have to worry about using an eyeshadow base. But I'm using that concealer to kind of melt the green. I was saying I'm using that color to melt my undertone into the top part of the green, but see how you're still able to see my little freckle there. It's all good to go. Now I think we should add some depth with this really cool color. Isn't this a fun color? It's this olive mustard. It's so good, it caught my eye. I've had it a while, I don't remember when I bought it. I bought it maybe a few months ago, but I don't ever get to use it enough. So this is called Natural Wilderness. 
And then notice it's on one side of my brush. I'm gonna push this into the socket. And then that more green base is gonna pull it definitely more green and that's what we wanted. I want a deep socket, but I don't wanna just go grab my classic browns or black. Just keep building that up in the socket and then I'm just going to bring it out this way a little bit. That's a fun color. You know, I saw this post the other day on TikTok and um, it was talking about how our lids are very, and it's very true, but they're, they're a lot looser as we age. But you'll always notice the way that I hold a brush. This is very helpful. So you're noticing that I'm holding it very far back which means I'm not really pulling that skin too far. So when we're tugging a lot, when we hold it up further, we're kind of tugging. And you can see that that's gonna start to move the eye. And then you don't have any kind of precision. But when you hold it further back, you're not disturbing your eyelid as much. And I learned this early on, not even, obviously I was in my 20s, so my lids were nice and tight. But I'm glad that I learned that because now that my lids are loosening a little bit more, I'll be 36 in two months, three months. Um, but this technique just makes a world of difference. So where you hold your brush really does matter. Really matters. If you want more control and just kind of this fluid motion that doesn't disturb the lids too much, holding it far back like this makes such a difference you'll have so much less tugging. And then when we're not tugging and it's not moving as much, you have that precision that you're after. Now let's hop over to this neon palette. And remember on Mondays, I do a lot of palette hopping. I try not to do it during the week because I do understand that not all of us have this plethora of palettes that I have acquired over the years because I like palettes, <laughs> but Every, on the rest of the days of the week, I try to be thoughtful of that, but Monday is all about creativity. So we're taking that neon and we're kind of pushing that right on top of that olive shade and on top of that base. And I'm just gonna keep doing this till I get to a level of blend that I like. That's looking pretty good. Kind of wanna add a little bit of yellow to it to kind of bring it back to this. So this color's perfect. And this is one of my favorite neon palettes, by the way. Fun. I'm using the side of, mm-hmm, that's where we needed to go. So we have a little bit of the depth from the green and then into that olive, and then I haven't picked up any more. This is just kind of what's left, and I'm just gonna to continue to bring it over this way. We'll clean this up later, but we still need that blend through here but we will definitely clean this up. So if you ever see me putting it in here, it's because I know I'll be able to fade it even more evenly. So that's why I work on, I tapped in one time, but that's why I work on the inner part too. And I'll work really far over this way as well. That's fun, I like it. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm using an E28 for this. It's really the perfect shape for this kind of pressing technique that I always do. And it's the perfect, uh, perfect shape for not tugging. Now look at the layers. Oh, it's so good. And let's take a little bit of the very bright white here on an E27, just grab it on the side. And then I'm just gonna place that right on this highest point of my brow. And then we'll do the same thing over here. But I switch sides so it fits here perfectly. Now, we're gonna clean up this lid just a little bit. And I don't need it to be a cut crease, but I don't want to add white base on top of that because then this color in a moment might be a little dulled. So if you ever want your eyeshadows to not have any kind of dullness, you want them to be their truest color, extremely bright, we are going to clean up that lid space with some micellar water. And as long as that micellar water dries down, and using a flat brush like this, you're using such a small amount that if I just touch it like this about two or three times, it's dry. Now we're gonna do white base. This one is from Melt Cosmetics. I really like this one. And I feel like if you have oily lids, you'll like these because 
They give you enough time to blend so you're able to really get it nice and smooth, but they will dry down. So I feel like if you have an oily lid, you would love this formula. Okay, so let's just tap that on. Make sure it's nice and smooth. But again, I'm not doing a cut crease, so I don't mind if a little bit of that kind of washes over because this shade will have a little bit of a translucent base depending on how you apply it. So you can still see my skin through there, just a hair. So it's just gonna wash over that dark olive color that I can't describe at the moment. But let's make sure this is nice and flat across the lid, just like we talked about earlier. Now I'm gonna finish this eye, and then we're gonna throw on the green, but then listen, usually around 1 p.m. is cereal time in this house, okay? It's time for, this is what we have for lunch. We love cereal. Do we have other options? Yeah, we do. Is cereal the best option? I don't know. I don't. But you know what? I love cereal. Ben loves cereal, and we're going to go eat our shredded wheat. We like it. We like the cardboard crunch. We don't, we just, we just have to have it. And if you feel the need to be judgmental, I understand. I do. You know what? I was once in your shoes. But that crispity crunch of that dry cereal mixing in with that milk, it's unbeatable. By the way, just like what Colby mentioned, this was that same brush that we used earlier with that green base that is wildly pigmented and kind of still a little bit on my hand right here. <laughs> but the fibers just don't absorb. Now, let's grab our shade. This is from Urban Decay, just a single shadow. I love single shadows because sometimes I used to find myself buying palettes just for one shade. So anytime I see a brand that has single shadows, I love that. Okay, do you see what I'm doing here? I'm just letting that wash whisper over the dark color. I don't want to completely cover it up. I still want its depth. Oh, that's so fun. I feel bratty already. I don't know what that means at 35, but I feel very bratty. Now, I want you to notice what I'm doing here. See that? I'm starting to leave space. I'm gonna leave space for liner because no matter how good your liner is, your liner does not enjoy going over a shimmer. It doesn't like it. It's not gonna wear the same. It's gonna get patchy. It's gonna actually listen. It'll even start to lift your liner because these kind of shadows, as long as there's something on top of them, it's fine. But what they'll do is they'll puff. They'll poof. So as they're poofing and kind of just fluffing, you know, it's what shadow does. It's a powder. Um, it's going to puff up your liner too. We don't have time for that. Mm -mm. Now I could have used a bigger brush and I'm going to go back over with a bigger brush, but I really wanted to be precise around the lash line. In fact, I might get my liner on and then come back in and soften it over the darker area of this way. But that's a tip that transfers to any look. Leave space. Now I could do it without putting on the liner first. I'll do the liner when I get back from lunch, but what I'm gonna do is I picked up one tiny little tab and I'm just ever so lightly feathering it into that crease shade. And when I say feather, I mean a wash, a light wash of color. I'm not gonna bring it up past this dark, the darkest shade, but I'm going lightly into it. All right, I'll be back. We need black eyeliner. And I'm gonna do white eyeliner underneath the black eyeliner and then don't be alarmed that's not a rattlesnake it's rhinestones <laughs> I'll be right back all right I'm already back it was so good listen today today got a little wild I added banana so I'm gonna use my rare beauty liner there's nothing quite like a fresh liner if your liner like this starts to pull, unfortunately, it's done. 
They should never ever drag. You should get instant color every single time that you place it on your eye. <laughs> if you have to tug or just continue to go back over a bunch, it might be time for a new liner or that might not be the best brand of liner. I like how this one doesn't bleed into my lines on my eye. Ooh, that's good. Okay, let me fill in the gap here. And I know you might think, wow, that looks really, that could be difficult to control, but it's actually so much easier when you're just getting that nice, even flow each time. So we got a nice, a nice batty wing going on today, but I wanted an extra extended because I'm gonna trace white underneath there later. And then we'll just clean it up with some micellar water. Dragging it down, wiping on Sheila, then sharpening it back up. All right, we're trucking. So I do just happen, I just got a partnership with Lily Lashes, which is really nice. Thank you so much, Lily Lashes. It feels good to be supported on the daily tutorials that I do anyways. So you will see ad now when I use these, but remember we were using it before and it was not an ad. Nope, I love them. This is a fresh pair. I have my other pair still, but I'm, I I did wear the other trendsetter. Is this trendsetter? No, this one's Go Getter. So I did wear the Go Getters out, but it was I want to say 20 wears. It could have been more, but we're just gonna say 20. But let's get these out. I can't remember if I trimmed these or not. Now, one thing I do want you to go get is lash applicators that's very important with these self-adhesive lashes it's going to help you so much you can just search um lash applicator on amazon all right now i'm going to trim like i always say i like to trim from the front and i've talked about how i do it i think i, I need to say that to my highlights but i did a, a pretty good tutorial on that the other day but i know my eye shape so i'm just going to trim to what i know I'm so excited. I feel like these lashes are going to be perfect with this look. I'm going to set it down. And if you've ever doubted maybe if something was an ad on mine or not, I have been doing this a long time and I've never had anything to hide. Um, if it's an ad, it will say ad. Simple as that. All right. And make sure these are even. Now, I always like to teach you how to put these on because I want you to enjoy them as much as I do. Now, if you don't want to touch them, all you'd have to do is hit them with a blow dryer on, uh, not cool, but on the lowest setting of warm. Just, just hit them with a blow dryer for 15 seconds and that's going to really activate the glue. But I just use my fingers because here we are. <laughs> Grab it in the center. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to let it get acquainted with the part that sticks out the furthest right here in the middle of the eye. That part sticks out the furthest. And then we're just gonna let them sit there for just a second. And what's happening is our body heat is continuing to activate that glue. And then what we're gonna do is make sure that we're connecting over here, then I'm going to clamp it to my natural lashes. And then here's the part, make sure that part's sticking down. See how it's not just yet? We're gonna wiggle it in there and then we're gonna start to clamp it onto the skin right above. Whoop, there it went. You just gotta give it a second to warm up. I, I love these lashes so much. And then remind me tomorrow and I'll show you how I take care of them, how I clean them, because you don't clean them the same way that you would clean a traditional lash, um, but all I, I will show you. I use, I'll just tell you really quickly, I do use micellar water and then I'll just lightly mist them with alcohol to keep them nice and fresh. I got you a link in case you're interested in it. $16. And I know it says that the wares are limited, but we were wearing them way before. I mean, y'all can check my saved highlights to see how far back I've been wearing them now. 
um, but the glue lasts so long. But we are gonna get, we're gonna need a video on how to maintain them, and I will do that. Okay, so I went and purchased a darker shade in this. This looks a little sketchy until we blend it out. Don't be frightened. I got shade 11. What you just saw me do with make sure that my bristles, see? Oh God, Lord, summer. Um, just make sure that my bristles are nice and even. Sometimes after we wash them, even after we reshape them, they might not be the shape that we need. So just hitting it a couple times, boop, boop. Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna add a little bit more here. So what I like about sticks, you can kind of just add as you go, it's really easy. Birkin sections. I do fear I'm gonna grab the shade in September, maybe early October, and I'm gonna scare myself to death. <laughs> so y'all remind me to switch back to, I think six, which I still have then. But right now, look, we're matching. <laughs> so I want some more coverage, but mainly through the center. I kind of like the freckles. So we're just gonna do, I'm gonna do my Jouer concealer, but I'm only gonna put it right here. That's dead bugs snoring today. And then we'll put some here. And I think I'll take a brush and really flatten it out a little bit more. Nice little highlight. I love this concealer. Now, what I was mentioning is I'm gonna take a C30 and I'm going to really smooth it out, just like we did that eye base. And I'm just gonna take it to right where that purple was underneath my eyes that I'm trying to cover. Really smooth it out. This is a really good technique if you find yourself gravitating more towards a full, co full coverage concealer, it's really important to smooth it out first. It's so important. A more full coverage formula takes a little bit more smoothing because it tends to have a, obviously a little bit more of a, um, I wanna choose that word rightly, uh, rightly. I wanna choose that word correctly. I don't wanna say the word heavy because that's we think of that as bad but it's just going to have more of a texture but we have to have that to get the coverage so just by smoothing it a little bit with a flat brush which you've, if you've ever seen a working makeup artist they'll always have a flat brush you've all you've seen that flat foundation brush um but for smaller areas like this we would use one like this so all right, we should be smooth enough. We're gonna use the concealer brush from the travel set just to continue to blend this out. Ooh, look at that blur. And by the way, the travel set is still 75. And then we're gonna melt that in. I might grab a little bit more concealer and melt that in in a second. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I See how smooth and blurred that looks? Just by that extra step. But to me, that doesn't feel like an extra step. I enjoy that. And you don't have to be as meticulous. You have to remember, I, I just enjoy every little tap, every little step. I know that we don't all enjoy makeup like that, but it just a, you didn't have to go into detail and in the, the way I smoothed. You don't have to get that detail. That's just me doing what I love. But what you can do, is just do a light smooth, it really will make a difference. Now I'm not fully blended yet, but that's okay. Now if there was ever a technique that was 2014, it was taking concealer and sharpening your wing, but my goodness, we did it for a reason. Let me grab more concealer. I'm actually gonna put a little dot of concealer on the back of my hand. So I have this, remember I put a little bit of concealer there and I remembered why, let's smooth it out. It's important, can't be picking it up all lumpy. I'm gonna take a fluffier brush, E29. We're gonna pick up a very small amount right in the center 
and then we're just going to tap it through here. And I'm doing that more full coverage concealer to really melt it in here. Perfect. There we go. I'm gonna use these bronzing drops. Make sure you give them a really good shake. These are from Cover FX. I used to love these. Then they had dropper issues, but now they're redone. Let's see, much better. So I'm gonna take this, and you can mix these in with moisturizer, do all that, but I'm just gonna use them as my bronzer today. And then C40, just to add some depth out here. Woo, that looks good. There is a darker shade too. It looks so smooth. I'm gonna put some on the forehead too. I have a video somewhere. It is an ad. This isn't. Well, obviously, you know. I don't. I'm not even gonna explain it anymore. Y'all know. Um, but I love how smooth these are. But I have that video on how to use them multiple different ways. Now for the ultimate transition, we're gonna grab our YSL bronzer and I'm going to apply this. So this is gonna go further back, closer to the hairline, and that's gonna create a really beautiful transition. And I cannot preach enough that makeup looks best in transitions. So this one's gonna be darker if we layer it on than the drops. So we wanna focus most of it underneath or behind it. You want that lighter shade to be above the darker shade. All right, I was recording and then it didn't want to post. So I went a little pinker with my under eye today. I used my ultra pink by one size because it's really going to complement the green because if you look at the color wheel, they're on the opposite side. While that does neutralize, together on the face, such as we have here, they're going to be really good friends. They're gonna look really nice together. Also, this is a little hard to get out. It is, but I do find that a makeup spatula fits in there perfectly and then I just scoop it out and then put it to the sides. It actually does pop off pretty easily, but listen, I don't trust myself with that power. That's chaos. That is chaos waiting to happen on Rose's vanity. Okay, let's pick it up, push it into the puff, even it out. Make sure that our under eye here nice and smooth don't want to set any creases even though this concealer really doesn't crease i'm just paranoid at this point i know it sounds a little complicated when we get into color theory but it's kind of fun to think about hey what color eyeshadow are we wearing let's do the uh, not complete opposite because the opposite of green is red um, but just that idea of switching to a pink powder one day i'll do a comparison oh that's a good idea so I'll do maybe a green eye look and then use the different powder, just like a normal shade powder and then the pink powder and to show you how it really does work together. See, this is how I get a lot of my video ideas, just hanging out here on stories with y'all. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and set the center. Nice. Just the center though. So I mentioned that because then we're gonna spray that. This actually sold out. That was wild. Um, but now what I like to do is I'm not going to spray the center. I absolutely can spray the center, but I really want to melt all the makeup together. So the difference between this and the Elemis one is that this one would actually set, um, but it's a super hydrating spray. I, I'll go copy and paste the um, what it does situation for you. I'll grab that. But I'm just going to spray the perimeter because then I like to take my foundation brush. So now we're going to take our foundation brush. Where did that go? And I'm just going to really melt everything together over here. The way that it melts makeup together is pretty exceptional. And I'm always looking for something to make everything look more seamless. And to me, this spray does it. Now I know it'll be back in stock soon. It just feels so lightweight. <laughs> Look at that, I just, mm. Uh, uh, uh. I love it. Somebody just DM me that I talk about cereal with the same passion that I talk about makeup and I have never felt more fulfilled in all of my life. <laughs> now since this is actually a setting spray, if you didn't want to, you don't have to add powder. 
Um, but if you're oily, you absolutely could. And what I love about this also, I'm gonna quit yapping about it, but I'm very passionate about it and I think it's fantastic. Um, it really helps balance the skin and it's really good for your skin barrier. So anytime your skin barrier is at peace, your makeup's gonna wear better. So I wanna do an ombre of peach to pink and I'm talking the baby pink, we're having fun. But I love this one because it's going to really transition from that bronzer, so that one's gonna go right into and above the bronzer, more on the side of the face. We're having fun here. All right, I'm gonna build it up just a little bit more than that. Ooh, I, lo I love this palette. <laughs> then we're gonna do this Kosas blush. It's more of a lavendery pink. And it's gonna have a little bit of a highlight to it. See that, isn't that fun? Now it feels very 90s, that lavender kind of highlight does. Fun. Sorry, I got too excited now that I've got this lavendery pink situation. Um, this is Kosas Blushes Life. The shade is Butterflies. Then we're gonna use this Natasha Denona liner. What you're seeing me do here is expose my waterline. There we go. Makes it a lot easier. I wear contacts, so that's a trick I picked up probably sometime this year. You really adapt. <laughs> Now let's take this Make White Liner. It's a liquid liner. Make sure you shake it really nicely though. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna put it on the inner part, just the bottom, I think. Cause I wanna put rhinestones somewhere in this vicinity. Oh Lord. Now under here, I think I'm gonna take a tiny amount of that. Remember that first green base we used? I'm gonna take that on an E26, just kind of buff that underneath here. By the way, I added the white on top too. There we go. And then we're gonna grab this one again and get that brat girl summer green. Press it on top of that base. Listen, I got time today. Mm. <laughs> Please, I'm sorry. I can't stop. I can't be stopped. Oh, we have fun here. Hmm, there's somewhere else I wanted to put it. I think that's good. No, maybe we'll put a little bit here. Just here when we blink. Yeah, perfect. I love these, by the way. They're really fun and very easy to use. They're, this one's, well, there's quite a few colors, but I was gonna say they're from Half Magic. Just wait till you see it with that camera. But do we have room for rhinestones? We do. We do. Don't you worry. I like to just use some lash glue. This one's Duo, line it, lash it, and clear. And then the rhinestones I'm using are just ones I got off of Amazon. And then this is just a nail art tool. That's just a little wax tip there. All Amazon, they normally come in a kit. It's really easy. Acting like y'all are gonna wanna be doing this. Well, some of y'all might. Okay, I'm gonna add a couple more. And if you've ever wondered, does she actually go places like that? I do. In broad daylight. I don't care. I like it. So MAC did a collab with a few influencers and this is the Gabriette collab. It comes in a cute little package, but I actually had everything except for the lipstick. So I just went and bought the lipstick and I still have the little kit. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is what I'm talking about. I still have it sealed. Like I said, I had it already, but it's this cute little lip kit and you're about to see the color. I'm about to put it on, but they did three um, collabs and I want to use the other two. So I don't think I have the other shades, but I knew I already had this one and I wanted something cool toned. So this is going to be very cool toned. So it comes with the shade Mac Stone. I'm going to try to use the side. So if I use the tip of it, it's going to be more pigmented. So I'm going to start by just using the side to kind of lay down a little bit of the color. I'll come back and define in a second, but I'm kind of just laying down a rough draft, as I say. 
And if you use the side, it's not as pigmented. But you still get some precision. Now we're going to grab this lipstick. And this is the one part I didn't have from the kit. But then I fell in love with this shade. And it's called Sellout with the dollar sign. I love this color. Now, you don't have to pair it with this cool of a lip liner. It's pretty with any lip liner. But it's just such a good shade. And I don't know why I had never heard of it. Hmm. Now, I'm going to take stone and kind of blend it in there and get more definition. I'm using more of the tip of the pencil now. And when you lay down kind of that rough draft, it gives everything something to melt and blend into. And then in her kit, she has this, and this goes on top, kind of like a little gloss, a shade of simulation. Um, remember, these don't need a whole lot of clicking, and then when I apply them, I kind of let them warm up on my lip, and then I just do some taps. Ooh, that's nice. Mm, I like it with the eye. Okay. I wonder if I'll ever stop doing these looks. I don't think I will. I, for a long time, when I was in my teens, late teens, early 20s, I always wanted to do makeup for music videos and um, really artistic looks, editorial. So it's, it's fun that they're still inside of me after all of these years, and I love doing them. They, they just, these looks make me so happy. All right, friends, I love y'all so much. Um, I'm not sure what I'm posting tonight. I think I'll post something helpful. I think we'll do that. Also, I uh, gotta go run some errands, so I will go like this, but then I'm gonna take it off and I've got something else I wanna film. I'm kind of excited. Okay, I love you with all of my heart. Thank you for putting up with the chaos that is Feral Monday. <laughs> it just, it helps my artist heart so much. I love you with all of my heart and I will see you in the comments tonight.